A lawyer for the plaintiffs, Shannon Liss Riordan, has made accusations against Twitter and explained why ex Twitter employees that are suing Twitter have a big advantage in this dispute. The situation looks very dangerous for Twitter. According to experts, there is a high risk that Twitter could lose several billion dollars as a result of the combined cases, and this fine might be catastrophic for the company. In response, Twitter criticized the lawyer and provided a thorough explanation about what the company did and why this lawsuit is unfair. As a result, it was revealed what Elon Musk did for Twitter employees and what benefits and advantages he offered them before firing. As a result of this dispute, we have found out about various horrible things that were happening recently within Twitter. One thing is for sure, Elon Musk is in a tough situation, dealing with all sorts of attacks from everywhere. This is a very interesting situation, so let's explain it. Elon brought about several controversial but needed policies and changes since taking control of the firm. He started collecting membership fees for verification and realized that the previous management had fired an excess of employees and he had to lay off a chunk of the company's staff. As a result, several employees have launched a lawsuit against the corporation. Employers are obliged under federal law to offer employees 60 days of severance compensation in lieu of giving notice. According to Shannon Liss Riordan, a lawyer for the plaintiffs, in all three outstanding claims, the former employees have been through a lot of uncertainty in a short span of time at Twitter. There is limited legal precedent on when remote labor qualifies as a reasonable accommodation under the ADA, and the answer ultimately depends on the facts of particular situations. As a result, handicap prejudice allegations might be difficult to bring in a class action case. The United States Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, which enforces the ADA, stated in 2020 guidance that remote work can be reasonable accommodation if it does not impose an undue burden on an employer. Twitter workers say that the layoffs violate both the federal and California WARN Acts, and they want to sue the corporation as a class action. Meanwhile, in a tweet, Musk claimed that the business provided three months of severance, which is 50% more than legally necessary. Twitter also told its employees that they would continue to receive pay and benefits for more than 60 days, which may meet the WARN Act requirements. The claim is expected to go to court, where a judge will make a decision. The combined lawsuits could potentially be expensive for Twitter, according to Michael Leroy, a labor and employment relations professor at the University of Illinois. However, the legal proceedings could take more than five years to resolve, giving the company leverage if it pursues settlements with former employees, according to Leroy. Ex-employees argue in one class action case that the corporation failed to provide the 60-day notice of layoffs needed by federal law under the WARN Act, which requires major businesses to give notice before executing a mass layoff, according to Shannon Liss Riordan, the worker's attorney. Liss Riordan, providing no evidence at all, claimed that Twitter intends to retain many, but not all, of the laid-off staff on the payroll for two months in order to comply with the legislation. She also claimed that the corporation does not intend to pay full severance after those six months, as originally agreed. In court files acquired by Reuters, Twitter informed a San Francisco federal judge that the new acquisitions of law violations are baseless and that it intended to forward the claims to arbitration. The business emphasized that all legal obligations to former employees have been met, noting that laid-off individuals were advised that their final day at Twitter will be January the 4th, which is more than the 60-day threshold under federal law. The IT titan is reacting to a class action lawsuit brought by former employees about the 60-day notice needed by law before proceeding with the layoffs. Twitter also stated that the current case has not only caused uncertainty, but has also caused severance payments to be delayed and that the firm has requested a judge to dismiss the action. Twitter tried to refer the companies to individual arbitration in a separate filing, claiming that the plaintiffs had consented to the arbitration of employment-related problems. Business organizations believe that arbitration is less expensive and more effective than litigation because it enables companies to avoid costly class action lawsuits. If the lawsuit is taken out of court, Liz Riordan stated she is ready to represent workers in arbitration. According to her, Twitter's argument in response to the case is essentially that the employees are subject to arbitration agreements, so the company need not be concerned about breaking the law. According to Liz Riordan, she completely understands that business leaders and owners get to make decisions about how they believe the company should operate in the future. But she points out that there are laws in place to protect workers, as well as laws to protect workers who are laid off. According to Leroy of the University of Illinois, Twitter should have paced its layoffs and went about them much slower. Still, Leroy believes the firm might make claims based on exclusions under relevant law. For example, he added, the federal statute requiring large corporations to provide advance notice of mass layoffs excludes companies in financial distress. It adds some ambiguity to their situation, he explained. Furthermore, the legal procedures might drag out for years, providing Twitter an advantage while it defends the claims or seeks a favorable settlement 
according to Leroy. Liz Riordan, the attorney in charge of some of the lawsuits against Twitter, acknowledged the difficulty of a potentially protracted judicial battle, but claimed the cases against Twitter may be settled quickly. Sometimes cases might take a long time, she explained. In this situation, she says she's hoping that they'll be able to address this sooner. Paying the ex-employees their dues would be the simplest solution to Musk's current problems, she adds. Musk has made significant modifications to Twitter since acquiring the social media network late last month. He redesigned the company's subscription product Twitter Blue, enabling users to receive verification for an $8 monthly charge, but he paused the deployment due to an increase in impersonations on the network, including Musk himself. Twitter has had a turbulent year in the market, with shares dipping as low as $33 and rising at $53.70. Musk bought the firm and it was delisted, which means it is no longer traded on the public stock market. Because the firm is no longer publicly traded, investors do not need to be concerned with the performance or value of the company's shares. However, it's worth keeping an eye on the corporation and this court battle. Twitter's demise could have ramifications for other social media platforms and technology companies. If Twitter fails, other sites may step in to fill the void, giving an existing platform a larger share of the market or providing an opportunity for a newcomer to see explosive growth. If Twitter can weather this storm, investors may want to keep an eye on the company to see if it goes public again. Facebook's parent company, Meta, has also announced layoffs. The social media behemoth is laying off 11,000 people, or 13% of its workforce. Meta has provided a significant severance payment, but it is uncertain whether its employees would file a similar complaint against their prior company. Investors in Meta and other social media sites may be interested in how Twitter's lawsuit plays out. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.